think it's recording. Okay, all right. My, okay. <clears throat> Hello, Harris County. You're probably wondering what's going on right now. Like, hey, where's Taylor, Sarah, and Celeste? Why is it just Leaf, the most annoying member of the librarian time traveling team? Well, a funny thing happened on our trip back in time to the 1990s. See, we, we all met at the North Channel Library. It opened in 1994, so it seemed thematically appropriate. We jumped into the librarian's guide to time travel like usual. I show up back here at the North Channel branch like usual, I, and I look around and my friends are nowhere to be seen. I, I checked the calendar, it says it's 1999, so I did go back in time, but somehow it looks like we all got separated. I don't know if it's all the dog ears I made in all the pages, or that time I spilled the high C ecto cooler on the cover, but clearly something went wrong. So here I am. <laughs> now, I, I don't really know what to do. I end up hiding in a broom closet as the library closed, so I'm by myself now, but I have the Librarian's Guide to Time Travel with me right here, and I figure I need to leave here and try to go find my friend somewhere here in Houston. But in case, you know, something happens, maybe someone can charge this phone in a decade or something and watch this video and find out what happened to me. <laughs> anyway, I'll probably head out soon, but Hey, one silver lining is the amazing VHS collection they have here. They have all the contemporary hits of the time, like Jurassic Park, Clueless, Friday, Titanic, and Edward Scissorhands. My favorite movie as a kid was probably Nightmare Before Christmas, which I still love, but looking back as an adult, films like Magnolia, The Truman Show, Nightbreed and Dazed and Confused are some flicks that are really important to me looking back. They also had a great children's cartoon section here which with some of my favorite shows as a kid like Doug, Ren and Stimpy, Dexter's Laboratory, Animaniacs, and of course The Simpsons. That's not really a kid show but I loved it as a kid. I, I was definitely a Nickelodeon kid but I also loved the Kids WB Saturday morning block and was of course watching every episode of Pokemon as soon as those started airing in 1998. And of course, speaking of animation, you can't ignore the power of the Disney Renaissance films like Aladdin and The Lion King. Maybe The Lion King was my favorite as a kid. I kind of wish they had a VCR here so I could watch some of these and brace myself for my perilous journey. Maybe I'll just take a copy of A Game of Thrones to read instead. I can't believe that came out over 20 years ago. So maybe I should take Infinite Jest. After all, I might be here on the streets for a while and we'll have a lot of time to kill. Well, I guess this is it. Maybe I should go back to my childhood home and talk to my mom and dad. Show my childhood self how cool I turned out. Actually, maybe not. Oh. All right. Wow, y'all will never believe this. Leaf, not Taylor, Leaf, really messed it up this time. I can't seem to find anyone. No Sarah, no Leaf, no Celeste. Everyone is gone, and the librarian's guide to time travel didn't make it here with me. Thank goodness I did have my phone in my pocket, or else I guess I'd really be lost. But that calendar says 1999? Oh, seems that I've been dropped in the perfect place, the music section of the Atascacita Library. And reading the signage, this library must have opened a last few years, maybe 96. Luckily, this whole 90s fashion thing is trending again in 2021. So no one really noticed me in here today, but I did have to hide in the women's restroom for closing though. Maybe tomorrow I'll set out to explore Harris County and find my friends. 
Tonight, tonight, I'm gathering information to bring back with me. They thought my pop music of the 80s was bad. <laughs> they had no clue. The 90s was music gold. Every genre had hit singles, from Garth Brooks' country single, I've Got Friends in Low Places, to Britney Spears' Baby One More Time. Even Black Street's No Diggity were all on the charts at some point. The grunge era had officially kicked off with bands such as Pearl Jam, Temple of the Dog, Hole, eventually creating another subgenre of indie rock, or what I like to call the beginning of the emo music. Death Cab for Cutie and the Pixies and Weezer made all the outcasts feel welcome and seen. Of course, pop still seems to be the most popular, you know? I managed to find all the albums I was listening to as a 90s kid. It makes me want to listen to my Walkman upside down on my bed. But too bad, I'm stuck here in the library tonight. I wonder what I was doing right now as a kid. At least I could mix up some great choreographed dances to like, if you wanna be my lover by the Spice Girls or, hmm, oh, oh, I want it that way by the Backstreet Boys. They even have Selena's Amor Prohibido. Oh, being a kid in Texas in the 90s, everyone was devastated when she passed in 95. I know future Houston still is painting murals in memory of her beautiful talents. Speaking of the future, that new Space Jam 2 could never beat 90s Michael Jordan and the Toon Squad in the OG Space Jam. Talk about one of the best ball players, hilarious cartoons, and incredible, and I do mean incredible, soundtrack. Basketball was just, just something else in the 90s, right? Even the Houston Rockets won back-to-back -back champions in championships, champions? Championships in both 94 and 95. Hmm. That makes me think, maybe that's why Space Jam was such a big thing when I was little. Oh well, ooh, it sounds like, it sounds like somebody's unlocking the front door of the library. I've gotta go, but if you're watching this, in present day, don't forget the Freegal app for all the 90s tunes. But for now, I've gotta go. I've gotta check in and put away the CDs. Hopefully we aren't stuck here too long. Leave Sarah if you find this. The phone before me, I was here in Atascacita Branch in 1999, and I'm coming to look for you. Okay. I knew if we kept messing around with time and space, something bad was gonna happen. The book must be broken. I've looked all over, but I can't find Leaf, Taylor, or Celeste. We were supposed to go back to the 90s, but it looks like we've been separated. Though this is definitely the 90s, judging by the decor. And judging by that plaque on the wall, this is Jacinto City Library, which opened in 1992. Since I can't find anyone, and there's not much to do but wait and hope that some deus ex machina plot point happens to bring us all back together again, I've looked around a little bit, and from reading old newspapers, I've been able to catch up on what I couldn't remember about the 90s from the first time around. First off, Harris County is really growing. They've already reached 2,818,199 people as of 1990. I wonder if they realize that soon that number will almost double. In 1990, Houston also hosted the 16th G7 Summit. That's pretty wild. I didn't know we were so international. Let's see, what else? In 1991, my alma mater, Go Cougs, changed their name back to the University of Houston from the University of Houston University Park. Now that's a change I can get behind. That year, the city of Houston had a referendum vote that made it to where elected positions have a term limit. From what I read in 1996, King went officially was annexed by the city of Houston. And in 1997, former Houston police chief Lee P. Brown became Houston's first African-American mayor. At the same time, Anise Parker became the first openly gay or lesbian city council member. As for the arts, the Westheimer Colony Arts Festival, now known as the Bayou City Art Festival, was held in downtown Houston, which was the first time to not be held in Montrose. And who could forget, in 1995, the city of Houston created their website. It took them long enough. Speaking of technology, I'm so glad I keep my Game Boy Color in my purse because who knows how long I'm gonna be trapped in 1999. And at least this way I can stay entertained without tipping anyone off to the fact that I don't belong here. Hey, there were so many cool developments in video games and technology during this time period. For starters, Linux came out in 1991, so all the OS rebels could get their fix. What else? Um, text messaging. The Nokia brick phone we all know and love? DVDs? 
the iMac, Google, I mean, RIP to Dogpile, Lycos, and the others, but Google changed everything. No more relying on world books for reports for me. As for video games, who could forget the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, or the legendary PlayStation with Final Fantasy VII? And the Sega Dreamcast will always hold a special place in my heart. I used to spend hours playing Sonic Adventure and Raising Chow. Well, I hope someone finds this video at some point. My Game Boy batteries can't last forever, and I'm really not trying to lose my progress in Pokemon Red. Not to mention, I only have five bucks, and they don't change the way the bill looks until next year, the year 2000. And so, our heroes begin their perilous trek through the vast concrete jungle of late 90s Houston, Texas, to find each other and return to the present day. After spending her last five dollars on a replacement battery, only to watch her Game Boy Color explode under the wheels of a passing semi-truck while crossing I-10, Sarah spent three sweaty days traveling north through Herman Park, and then east along the edge of Wallaceville Road. Having eaten through her supply of Dunkaroos and melted Flintstone push-ups from her purse, she tried raiding the dumpster of a local blockbuster video for more candy before finding Leaf half-conscious in a nearby alleyway having made it 137 pages into infinite jest before collapsing of boredom. Delirious and with no leaves, Sarah and Leaf ventured south and spent six months pantomiming unreleased films for pennies in Herman Park before authorities arrested and relocated them to the less high-profile Alexander Deuson Park back up north. There, they found Taylor and Celeste living in an intricate houseboat made of twigs on the bank of Lake Houston operating a mobile library made of books written by the local forest animals. They jumped into the still miraculously pristine The Librarian's Guide to Time Travel and returned to August 2021, where they emerged from their harrowing experience, fresh-faced and ready to take on more exciting adventures. Oh my gosh! We forgot Celeste in the 90s! Leaf, no! It's her day off, remember? Oh, right. Okay. <sighs> you know, I think I might be a little bit scarred from that last trip back in time. Only a little? I think it's time to check the librarian's guide to time travel back in. Or burn it. We can't burn it! We're librarians! Plus, it's, it's a staple of 90s literature, just like The Giver the perks of being a wallflower, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Interpreter of Maladies, and the Stinky Cheese Man. Leaf, I don't think that book is from the 90s. I don't even think it's from this dimension. Okay, so we have had some fun traveling through time, but we've made it all the way through the 20th century. Maybe it's time to retire anyway? Sounds good to me. All right, you little stinker. You ready to go back into circulation? Hey, where'd it go? Looks like its journey isn't over yet. I just hope the lost book fee on that one isn't too high. Well, I guess this is where we say goodbye, Harris County. I hope you've enjoyed our trips back to the past, and we hope to see you in person at your favorite Harris County Public Library branch soon. But until then, see, see you, you in, in the, the present. present.